Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still working on industrial electronics entry, uh, having revisions. We have got the question paper that we are going to be focusing on DC theory, that is the application of uh, or the use of the Kirchhoff's laws. All right, that is uh, from the question paper of August 2021, so that you can see how uh, we can uh, approach typical questions in our final examinations. All right, so we are given this part of a series parallel DC circuit uh, consisting only of resistors and a power supply. Use Kirchhoff's laws to answer the questions that follow. All right, so this is what we have from our diagram uh, with the direction of currents uh, from the supply. This is your positive, negative. This is the direction of current uh, for I1 this way. Uh, then I1 is going to branch into this branch having uh, I2 and I3. So this is our I2 in this branch, and this is our I3. And I3 is given as I1 minus I2 as this part here is I1 minus I2 uh, from the sum of currents into and the ones that are flowing away. This is the same, uh, this current, which is uh, from this branch, this branch here, which is I1, is the same I1 that we have here uh, affecting this whole thing. So the I2 affects D and F. I3, which is I1 minus I2, it's af it affects from C to E only. That is where it is going to affect. All right. So that is what we are given. So the first part of the question is to determine from 5.1, uh, determine uh, the equation of loop one, which is A, B, D, F, G, uh, H, that is uh, two marks for that equation. Okay, so I'm going to uh, have this equation aside. Let me just use this part or uh, let me just use this part aside. So given from A to B, so this is our loop one, which is on 5.1. So our loop one is taken from A to B to D to F to G to H and then it goes back to the point A. So you can even indicate the A or you can leave it like that. Okay, so this is our loop here. From point A to B, this is the direction from point A to D, uh, back to this direction to F, uh, to G, to H. So this is the loop that we are considering in this case, all right, as our loop one. So according to the direction of current, uh, this is from the positive side, meaning to say we are maintaining the direction of the flow of current. So we are going to have, uh, remember that the product, uh, the voltage that you are going to have in a closed loop, the total voltage is equal to the sum of the algebraic sum actually of what the voltage drops that you're going to have, which is the product of current and resistance across each branch that we are given. So let's start with I1, this branch with I1. So I1 here is affecting here the R5, uh, this branch from uh, this point, uh, from this point here uh, to G, H, A, to B up to this point, this whole part is affected by I1. So it is going to be I1 times the product of the two resistors, which is R1 and R5, which is the sum. So you're going to have R1 plus R5, that is current times resistance. We move on from B, uh, this point here, this junction, where we've got D up to F at this point here. We have got I2 in this case, this is the current flowing and it is maintaining the direction of the flow of current. So we are going to have current two times the resistor across this branch, which is resistor four. So we have formulated an equation. We can substitute our total voltage, that's nine, is equal to I1 into R1 plus R5, that is R1 and R5. We are going to add, this is 100 plus uh, 25 together times I1 plus R4, which is 33 times I2. So it's going to be 33 times I2. So that's current times resistance. So you formulated an equation which we are going to use in solving. So it's 100 plus 25, which is 125 I1 plus 33 I2 like that. So you can even start with these variables, which is 125 I1 plus uh, 33 I2 is equal to nine is still one and the same thing. So as we can see, uh, it's best that we, uh, 
we are given, we are given the loop and that was the best thing. But sometimes they might not give you the loop. They will just ask you to calculate the current. So you have to be very, very careful on that condition. Then on 5.3, we are now given a consideration now to determine the equation for loop one, which is uh, loop two, sorry. Okay, they are now saying, so this is now our second loop, which is given as uh, A, B, C, whatever that you're given. So I'm just going to have it here, just aside. I think it's gonna help us. All right, so we are given, uh, this is a uh, 5.2. So we are given now, this is as loop A, B, C, E, G, H. Then it goes back to the point A. So let's trace that series. Uh, let's trace and see what you're given. So it's from A, to B, okay, let me just remove this part so that it won't affect us. Uh, uh, all right, all right, all right. What are they trying to do now? All right, sorry for that. Uh, I want to remove it slowly. So let me remove this. All right, something like this. All right, so now we let's present it uh, and see what you're going to have. So we are working with A, B, C, E. That is A, B, C, uh, here, E to G, to H and back to A, which means we are working with this outer, the outer part of the circuit like this. We are working with the outer part of the circuit like this. This is the, the part that we are being given to follow like this one, the outer part. So meaning to say, we are going back to the same voltage which we had this one of uh, nine volts in this case but remembering our current flows guys the one that we are given uh our current flows okay so we are going to see that our voltage is going to be let's consider the first branch uh in the first branch that we are given we have got uh in this case uh that is uh, uh all right so here we are going to work with these two combined all right, the first part from this point, you can work with the branches separate or you can combine from this point up to this point here, from this G to H to A to B. This whole part is one thing, G, H, A, B. So which means we've got R5 and uh, R1, just like the previous part that we had. So this is going to be I1 into uh, R1 plus R5 like this, okay? We move on. Uh, we, have, we are done from this point up to G, up to H, up to A, up to B. We, now we move on from this point here, going to the point C, up to the point here after the point E. This branch here, we have got two resistors, which is R3, R2 and R3 with current in the same direction, which is I1 minus I2. So that is going to be plus the current I1 minus I2 times the sum of the two resistors because they are in series, which is R2 plus R3 like this. All right, so this is what you're going to have. So you can substitute our values in this case, all right? So if you are to take note here, our V is the total voltage, which is nine is equal to, in the branch, this one of I1, there are two resistors, 25 and 100. So you add these two together, 100 plus 25 times current I1. We move on to the, other branch that has got I1 minus I, there are two resistors, 150 and 56. So we add these two, 150 plus 56 together times the current I1 minus I2, which represents our I3. Remember, we said this is our I3. So this is what you're going to have in this case. All right. So with this information, we can expand our brackets, everything, add Wherever we need to add 100 plus uh, 25, this is 125 I1 plus if we add uh, 150 plus uh, 56 in this case, this is uh, going to be the total. Uh, we have got uh, 150 plus, uh, okay, this is 150 and 150. So this is going to be 166. So you shall have this as 166. So this is actually 200 and not uh okay 206 sorry for that guy so this is 206 into i1 minus i2 so remember these two are together in the same branch so that's why we have to add these two just like what we did on 25 and 100 we added these two so this is going to be 9 is equal to 125 i1 plus 206 times i1 which is 206 uh i1 
minus 206 times I2, which is 206 I2. So you can collect like terms from the 125 and the 206. Uh, this is going to give us 331. So that's 331 I1 minus 206 I2 like this. All right, so we have our final equation in this case. So with these two equations that we have, these are the ones that we are going to use now to determine the unknown currents I1, I2, and I1 minus I2. So we are going to have the first current that we, the first equation, uh, this one, and we combine with the second equation, this one that we got here. All right, so I'm just going to have our equations here so that we can calculate for I1 and I2. So that's 5.3. So this is what we had, guys. From the first equation, we obtained this one. It was 125 I1. So that was 125 I1 uh, plus uh, 33 I2, which was equal to 9, if you still remember. Okay. Then our I2, this one, we can start with this side, which is 331 minus 206. So you can start with the right-hand side. All right. So this was 300 and uh, 33, 331, not 33, 331, I1, uh, minus 206, I2, in this case, which is equal to 9. So depending with the method uh, that you're going to use, so you've been using elimination. Uh, I've been actually working with elimination in different questions, but for this one, I'm just going to change uh, a little bit, to change the strategy, uh, work with the substitution method. Yes, someone might be used to substitution method and be wondering, is it not useful or is it not possible to use substitution? It's possible to use uh, the substitution method. So remember from substitution method, you check the uh, equation that you're going to use. Oh, we've got equation one and we've got uh, equation two. So I'm going to use a uh, substitution uh, method for this one, that is a substitution uh, method. So from substitution method, I'm going to, from equation one, I'm going to make I1 the subject from equation one. So from equation one, I'm going to make I1 the subject. So that's 125 I1 is going to be equal to, if we transpose the plus, 130, the plus 33 I2 to the other side is going to be a minus. So it's going to be nine minus uh, 33 I2. So remember, I want to make I1 the subject, so you can divide by 125. Each and every term is going to be divided by 125. Each and every term by 125. So that means uh, I1 is equal to 9 divided by 125, which is something like uh, 0, 0,072 minus 33 divided by 125. This is going to give us something like 0, 0,264. I2 like this, which is now my equation three. Back to your mathematics. If you have made the subject from one equation, then you are going to substitute. Remember, this is substitute method. So what you're going to do, you substitute this equation that you have determined or that you got here into uh, equation two. So we are going to substitute uh, equation three, this one that we got equation three into equation two remember we 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 made this one from equation one so you substitute in the other equation not from equation but but in the second in the other equation that you need you didn't work with from the first part so this one you are going to substitute into equation uh one uh sorry equation two which is the second equation that we uh have so we are going to substitute this expression for i1 so that means we are going to have from this equation here, if we substitute here in place of I1, this is going to be 331 times I1. So we are going to have this as 331 times I1, which is this is our I1 now, the one that we are substituting, which is our equation three, which is 0, 0,072 minus 0, 0,264 I2. So we have substituted in place of I1, but we still have the other part of the equation, which is minus 206 I2 is equal to 9. So we're going to subtract 206. So it's minus 206 uh, I2, which is equal to 9. So this can help us to solve for I2 separately since we are just left with an equation with I2. So you can solve this 
expand your brackets by 333 times this one, you're going to obtain 23.832, 331 times this value, we are going to obtain negative 87,384I2 minus 206I2 is equal to nine. So you can collect like terms these two, that's minus 87,384 minus 206 which is going to give us a negative uh, 293,384I2 in this case is equal to, we can transpose this 23,832 to the other side is going to be a minus, that's 23,832. So if we are to subtract, uh, this is going to be uh, a negative. So we're going to obtain negative uh, 14, 832 in this case. So this can help us now to determine or to calculate the value of I2. Since you are multiplying here, we can divide by uh, negative 293,384 both sides by negative 293,384 both sides. So this can cancel, we remain with I2. So that means current two is equal to uh, definitely it's going to be a positive was a negative, negative is going to cancel. So your answer is going to be a positive, which is a 0, uh, 0.051 in amps, all right? So this is I2. So that's how you can use substitution. So since we have calculated I2, we can now substitute this I2 into any one of these equations, but it is best if you are dealing with substitute back in your mathematics, you know that this is best for you to substitute into the equation where you have already made I1 the subject. In equation three, already I1 is the subject. So you can substitute there from 0, 0,072 minus 0, 0,264 I2. The value of I2 that we calculated here, we can substitute so that we can have our I1. So that means this is going to be equal to 0, 0,072 minus 0, 0.264 times the answer for I1 and this for I2. And this is what we got for I2. That's 0, 0,051. All right. So if we simplify this, everything, we are going to obtain 0, 0,059 amps representing our I1. All right. So that was it, guys, from this part. But remember that also we are asked to calculate I3. All right, so this is what we have. Uh, also, we are asked to calculate I3, which is I2, I1 minus I2 on this other part here, that is I1 minus I2. So this is representing I3, which means we are going to subtract from the currents that we calculated. We have I1, we have I2. So we're just going to subtract these two so that we can determine our I3. So that was the equation for I3 in this case. All right, so I'm going to have this as uh i1 minus i2 is equal to i1 that is this one uh 0, 0.059 minus i2 which is 0, 0.051 so if we are to subtract this we are going to have a uh, 0, 0, uh, 0.08 amps so this is what you're going to have or you can write this as 8 milliamps even these ones you can even write them in milliamps 51 milliamps uh 59 milliamps are depending with the uh, the way you want to uh, answer because you are not given the units to work with. All right, so these are, these are the typical questions that you are going to be asked and you have to be very, very careful how you are going to attempt or to answer these typical questions depending with the loop that you are given. Sometimes you are not given the loop, you are just given a diagram. So from that diagram that you are given, you work with the, with the information that you have from your diagram to answer whatever question that you have. So this is what we had from our diagram. And we have to be very, very careful also uh, noting the direction of currents, the direction of currents. You are supposed to be very, very careful on how you apply your currents. For now, that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.